What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Spanish Empire. And to pick up where we left off, things have gone very well. We've successfully captured London. We're slowly converting her to being a full Catholic state. She is growing handsomely. They do not hate us. And that leaves us um, able to land and take her colonial possessions overseas. So we have one small force here under Jose de Zuniga, who's going to go hit the Nassau and the Bahamas. We have another force coming in across the sea, who will combine with this force here at Havana. They will actually meet up at Santiago de Cuba, where they will be combined and sent over to hit Port Royal. What would actually be really helpful, I think, is if I sent over um, a bit of support. Oh no, I did send them out. I sent two fifth rates over with that force, which is perfect. Um, because I could try and gobble up some of these race-built galleons that are dotted around the med. That would be quite an effective way to boost my naval presence and also maybe start to send out some ships to uh, trade theatres. Potentially. Because I never really do that because I'm a bit pants at the naval side, but I'm, I should get better at it. In fact, well, I've got... Okay, well, first of all, let's... Okay, pick clear out the galleon and the sixth rates and the weaker units. Well, actually, I want a couple of tiers of force. Obviously, I need a force here to protect my port, but I also want a better force to act as my strike fleet. So these Briggs and Jebek can all combine in Candiz, because that's where they've... This is where I'm putting ships that I don't really have a use for, so I'm going to ship this light galley up to Bilbao. Because I can at least free up this general and militia unit to maybe go back to Madrid and be the core of a new army, or maybe they might... No, that's already... They've already they're already generaled up. Um, but I could... What, I, want an, I want a good fleet here to help protect my ports but at the same time I don't actually want to, actually I might move this sloop over here as well if I'm going to keep a militia unit here because Cartagena is a critical port um, but yeah I would like to send more ships overseas and fundamentally that means I need to recruit them because we do have um, we can recruit build, we can build a dockyard but Britain's already got one which we can slowly recruit from in time but I think that's going to be something for future turns. What I do want to do is eventually get this force back to mainland Spain because I'm going to take Geronimo. Well, sorry, it's going to be called Geronimo rather than Ger Geronimo. It's going to be called Geronimo. That's just how it's going to be. Um, I probably will declare war on Prussia because Prussia is only allied with Hanover. So that shouldn't be diplomatically quite a major problem. Um, we can push to take Algiers, we can take, we can then take Tunis, who are also being attacked, um, who are owned by Genoa, who are also being attacked by the French anyway. So we can take Tunis and we can also take Corsica, which means that we have control over a significant portion of the Western Mediterranean. So I think that's a good plan, but I'm going to hit end turn because I have no money. I'm going to let things carry on. Oh, the Italian states are going off Tripoli. That would be a bit of a bummer, but that could be a potential future... Oops, the French got pushed back with the first attack in Genoa, and they've gone back to siege again. So if the Italian states take Tripoli, then that might lead us to war against the Italian states and Rome in future. It's not a problem, because part of my plan is to take my force that's in England, I can bring them back and land them on Sicily to retake it from the Mughal Empire. But I am going to want to slowly build up a garrison um, in mainland Britain as well, because I, don't, I do not, and I can't, lose those territories because they're providing us with a good amount of tax income. So I think that's a good plan. Continue to gobble up British possessions in the Caribbean, strengthen a British, a new British garrison, but then progress my war in the Mediterranean because right now that's we've actually got a fair amount of flexibility to focus our efforts in that direction to, to knock um, to knock some stuffing out of the Ottoman Empire. And I w it would be tempting to maybe take Athens and Cairo and try and dig in and go for peace and say, OK, we've managed to establish these enclaves in the eastern Mediterranean, but then 
um, try and seek for peace. It looks like the Ottomans might be up to their tricks. So I'll see you guys in a second whenever they... And we're back. And it's interesting to see a Russian presence in the Med, but maybe they are fighting the uh, the Ottomans as well. Well, they do share a border with them. And they are historical enemies. Um, but I think it will be good for us to consider them... Consider the Ottomans as our main threat, but to not necessarily exclusively focus on them. I mean, I don't want to uh, destroy them. I don't want to attack them and for them to be... Sorry, I've got some tape stuck on my desk. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to uh, destroy them and remove them from the map. I want to uh, damage them and cause them some losses, but I don't necessarily want to lose them entirely. Okay, our fleet is here. Although the range is terrible, so stay in the deep waters. And then hopefully dash in. Between them, a fifth rate, firepower of 165, hull strength 3100. That's just a Jebak they've got there anyway. Let's move you guys over to the port anyway. Building constructed. Okay, Spain has built a upgraded university, so clamor for reform isn't great. So I'm going to upgrade this bawdy house to a theatre. We're getting 3,000 income because they are... No, oh, because we've lost trade with Genoa. That will be a shame. Um, okay, so what I'm going to want to do probably 1,400 cash is build... Actually, I don't need to build any cheap ships. I have cheap ships. Get this ship up to Portsmouth. I can't build any good warships. But I can build a bit of a garrison for London. And I can bring these militia out. Mr. Coronado can embark his army. You guys can't... You can't go exactly where I need you to be safely, but you can. Let's make a bit of room. Just so next turn all I have to do is shift the ship, shift the fleet out. They're in position ready for the jump next turn. Yeah, they're raiding our trade routes, but again, there's not... past the Ottomans up to no good. Not a lot I can do about that, but what we are going to do is declare war against the, the Prussians, who are allied with the Ottomans anyway, so I'm not going to call my allies in to help. So these men can now push along to Algiers. I'm going to take one of these light ships to sit in their port permanently, just to prevent them from repairing and rebuilding. We also have a port there, so I might take a Jebek. You can sail out to occupy this port, lest the Ottomans use it for their invasions. Genoa is still holding on. But if we can take Algiers fairly quickly and keep them happy, it's part of the reason why I've got my agent over there to help convert the, re help convert the population. Um, you're not necessary. But yeah, the, the, the goal will be to send this force here at Cadiz next turn over to Naples to hit the Mughals and knock them out and take Naples back for our for our people. Let's check our research. One more turn till we get two good technologies. Coke Blast Furnace will give us a good boost from our metalworking buildings and socket bayonets. I have no... I have no evidence or proof to explain why this happens, but I have to imagine it, it improves their uh, it improves their the ability of my pike armed units in combat. Let's do that. So the next turn, I definitely want to upgrade the admiralty somewhere to improve my naval techs. But what I can do is march you fellas over to Nassau and let's take this Caribbean holding. Let's add more resources to the to the, to the the global market. And I'll probably go for coffee because I don't have any coffee at all. There's definitely a case to be made to just always pick the, um, the most valuable resource. But I'm 
I like the variety. I'd rather have a, a mixed empire that trades all sorts of things rather than an empire that, you know, just trades sugar. So it's got a colonial infantry up front. We haven't actually seen them used yet. I don't. Well, no, we have in defensive actions, but not really in a proper battle. They look pretty good. So let's put my militia on the left. Skirmishers and irregulars on the right. My pikes following up the centre. Cavalry on the left. Cavalry charge up. Looks like you've got one lone. Oh no, it's pirate mob dug in, so we don't necessarily want them to push up. But we want our militia to push up and flank them and force them to abandon their defensive position. Then we have our skirmish troops on the right. My gunners probably have them engage the, uh, the main body of troops on the right. And they are also going to get the pike support. Yeah, I want to deploy a couple of troops just to uh, force these chaps away from their cover. So it's Firelock Arm Citizenry and Buccaneers up front. They have no artillery. So let's speed up time. Chiefly because I don't want to run. There's no need to run. My artillery is doing a good job. That and my artillery might. You can use it as an opportunity to uh, grow and expand expand their capabilities, expand their experience level. So let's keep Pike Cavalry out wide. Glorious Pikemen in their gleaming white coats. Okay. Now let's push. After saying I don't need to rush, I'm going to push up while they're still uh, while they're still in formation. Just saw my frontiersmen. My grizzled hunters of the frontier. Can open up, as can my native irregulars and my other frontiersmen. So the first unit has fallen under our under our volleys, so let these men reload. So those men should will open up onto the pirate mob here. So hopefully that will force them to to uh, change positions. Mass routes, but they will come back. Let's just let them let them think they have the edge for now. Get my artillery to focus on the general's bodyguard. To be honest, I might just charge in my cavalry to deal with these chaps because it doesn't look like they want to outwardly leave that dug-in formation. So we're going to have to turf them out with our cavalry. I don't know why you guys aren't. There we go. You guys might go up there and help them out. These buccaneers have unloaded their pistols against my militia. Okay, so now it's time to split up the effort. We don't need line infantry to deal with one unit of buccaneers over there, but whereas they could be could be more useful to swing more support over into this combat. Because these buccaneers should be cut down fairly quickly. Those buccaneers are routed. These chats will likely rout under withering fire from our irregulars. Come on, men. Get me ready. The frontiersmen are like skirmishers light, I think. They are better, but they're not like riflemen. They've got the range bonuses, but they don't have the accuracy of of riflemen. So where's my 
pike boys. There they are. So let's bring all my troops over. I'm ready to chase down their general. Provincial cavalry and the militia are slogging it out with them. One unit form is forming back up. these light hopefully these irregulars can knock out that, that unit there let's get a militia unit to start peppering their general with musket fire let's bring you guys over here so do have guns for my artillery firing at them as well so they should be uh no, yeah they are firing This particular action, militia are just fine. Yeah, there we go. They've already been chased off. It's in the militia here that are weakened they can form up to unleash their volleys. Well, volley. We don't need them to do a huge amount of damage. Just break them. There we go. Excellent. That's the that's the pirates turned away under our withering fire. And that's a, that's another region that's been uh, absorbed into our empire. So we can't repair Bahamas, but we need to repair the governor's residence, build a plantation, and upgrade roads. But at least now the territory has gone from earning zero to earning eight next turn. So that's something at least. You guys have to play it steady. Because I want you to scoot into there. If you have to go around Santo Domingo, that's okay. Let's hit end turn. My spy has infiltrated Tripoli. Let's see if the French can successfully capture Genoa. There we go. And the French are upholding their allies. Oh god, they've pushed on taking Milan as well. Yeah, France could actually become a, a problem for us eventually, but if an alliance is going to be broken, they're going to break it. I'm going to make them do it. I'm not going to do it. More raiding of my... Mediterranean shipping lanes. Fortunately, I think the Russians are off to do some to do some offensive action of their own. Of course, the Russians will also have the Swedish to deal with in due course. New Spain. So I just want New Spain to have a strong navy to help clear out the uh, the Caribbean for me. We have another rake. Interesting. So let's carry on. Actually, let's get some Western European mercenaries as a garrison. Tech advances. So we've gone from socket bayonets. We don't want carbines. So let's go sort that out. We don't... Well, I suppose I should get carbines because I'm not really that bothered about other things. We need to build a new naval board and a great arsenal. So you might get that, then have to get grenades to get down this artillery track a bit faster. So you men march on to Algiers. You should should be able to demand a surrender because they have no garrison. Let's hop over to the Americas. Let's repair the port and repair the governor's residence. We can't do anything with it, but at least. We could start earning some extra wealth from the, the region. We've got two ports upgraded. We didn't manage to infiltrate Tunis. But we do have this fleet of ships that can sail to Cuba, or sail nearby Cuba. Pick up army, pick up some troops. And then sail them 
Okay, they can't. Yeah, they can get there in one turn. I mean, this is a lot more one sided, so I'm going to water resolve that. So now Jamaica has been taken in. And again, it's going to be the same sort of thing. We need to do some investing. So I'm going to hit. Even though I could attack the Mughal Empire now, I'm going to hit end turn one more time. I'm going to spend the um, income on my two new colonial um, colonial acquisitions, and then I'm going to attack or land on land in Sicily and see if the Mughals attack me. Because at some point, well, we do just have so many more things to spend money on than we have finance to do it. I like I do need to keep building up my navy. For example. But I can't do that. Because I'm slightly bottlenecked. So I need to make my... <laughs> the New Spain took out the pirates immediately. And there you go, my spy went in. Alliance broken between France and Austria. So is France going to be at war with Austria soon? I hope so. So we've got Weaver's Cottage Bill and Newport upgraded in Spain. That's all lots of very good stuff. But, like I said, first things first. Let's get a... I'm pretty sure we've got oodles of, co of sugar. Yeah, plenty of sugar. So let's get some coffee. And coffee's... Coffee's the worst commodity on the market, but whatever. Well, it's the worst commodity for now. Got lots of stuff in Cuba we could upgrade. We want to... Re Rebuild the governor's barracks and upgrade the roads here because they're particularly bad. So let's replenish this garrison. Replenish this garrison. Again, that, that leaves us without cash. For one last turn. For, or for one more turn. Britain's slowly becoming open to the idea that us Spaniards aren't quite so bad. Okay, so maybe next turn is the turn to land on the Mughal territories. Because I don't want to do it without having the capital behind it to uh, help re re rebuild the army. The Ottomans are chasing down the Russians, so their offensive action didn't do too well, but it did thin out the Ottoman ranks somewhat. But let's see. The, uh, the French, the Franco... Austrian war might be a bit of a welcome distraction. If we can keep those two focused on each other, we can go down and gobble up some of the more easily accessible Ottoman territories. New royal heir, Maria Antoinette. Uh oh. I mean, our <laughs> I mean, our king's pretty pants. Okay, we didn't. Okay, let's drop our policies down in America. I'm pretty sure you guys have reminded me to do that, and I just keep forgetting. It doesn't. It's going. It's going to drive down our income a bit, but seven thousand is not bad. Okay, so Iran is not going to be a shipyard. I'm going to demolish that. Algiers. I'm going to upgrade the governor's residence, if only to allow them to leave the city sooner. Minus two is not. Minus two is fine, in theory, but I'm just going to leave them there another turn because there's no immediate rush to knock out Tunis. I might get one port here as a fairly cheap upgrade, but then we really do have to take this sloop out. Let's get my other weak ships into port. And these guys are going to sail for Taranto. And put the city under siege. There we go. We are back in strength. You should be afraid, Mughal Empire. Be very afraid. Um, I mean, I could I could attack them, but I'm gonna. I'm going to let them stew. So upgrade farms in Algiers because I want to get these towns upgraded relatively quickly. Need us 5,000. We're about to get a new port in Cuba in a few turns. Again, they're still limited by port capacity, but we can't do anything about that. 
I could build another port, but I can't really do that till I get the next level text. You're gonna research wedge formation? No, you're gonna go for improved grenades, Seville. Salamanca's got two turns to measuring tools, which gets us metal roads and lots of industrial boosts. That's really good to research. Um, now, what I do want to build is... Let's get two fourth rates on the go. And let's upgrade this church school to a Jesuit college. To speed up the conversion of Britain and hopefully start to get some religious happiness. Because I really do want to build a school here. Three, re three universities is perfect, I find. Okay, let's hit end turn and see if the... I mean, if the, if the Mughals don't sally out of Milan this turn, I will fight them. And we can end this episode on a, a large battle. The, Ottoman is the Ottomans are returning. But yes, I would very much like control of Sicily. And North Africa, while it's not a very financially useful region... Yes, here we go. While North Africa isn't necessarily a financially useful region in Empire Total War, I mean, they're not... They're not endowed with numerous resources or lots of towns. Um, but they're not bad. And they they provide other targets for enemy attack that aren't by more critical regions such as Madrid or Morocco or wherever. They're somewhere in the med that other factions may think are my weak spot when actually they are quite a, quite a useful buffer. Okay, they're going to come charging down the hill. So, let's just get ready to meet them with... Volley fire. So I would like to attempt after this battle to uh, get a peace treaty with them. Because I really don't want them screwing up my plans. So I'm hoping they would accept peace after this. I doubt it, because the, the AI usually doesn't unless you've done a real truly crippling thing to them. Let's get this regiment of horse onto the right. Okay, so bulk of their forces are out here on the right flank, rather than... Well, there are some weirdly out wide. So what are you, then? A set of guns and a bunch of camels and some bowmen. Still want to act cagey though because you have camels and camels suck but I've got Tercio pikemen ready to say hello same as on the right flank Tercio pikemen well he's a regular pikemen they're ready to meet the enemy Let's get the cavalry further out on the flank. Camel gunners, boom. And the, it's got three units of camels on this flank. It, I definitely do want to hunker down. So this artillery, if you're going to fire... This artillery is going to fire over this way. I'd rather they focused on the camels being a large unit, they get more hits. And let's get these pikemen over here as well, because there are even more camels. Which my pikemen would love to meet. But yeah, you bombard... Okay, specifically hit this unit, because it's moving more across your position. Well, it was. Let's get ready to meet them with volley fire. Actually, let's keep them going out onto the flank so they don't get hit by any misses. We can engage them in a musket battle and I can charge at them with my pikes. Let's get my tertiary pikes out on the flank as well. You men halt fire for now till my pikemen get close or get past. Ok, 
Okay, let's deploy a regiment of horse to chase them down. Because camels are slower than cavalry. And because they do accept, they take lots of damage. Units take lots and lots of damage when routing. So if I can chase them down with my with my cavalry, I can maybe route the uh, shatter them. No, I can't. So bring my cavalry back. Bring my camels up. These guys are going to get engaged by the camel gunners. So over on this flank, you men cease fire. Keep attacking them. Once you kill enough of them, you can be relatively confident they aren't going to cause any more problems. Let's push my left... Where do I push my left flank up? I push some of it up at, eventually, at some point because I do have... A, uh, I do have a large number of cavalry on that flank that's just dying to meet their artillery. So let's keep my cavalry around just to provide some enticing targets for their camels, but let my let my pikemen go to work. And then I can take this flank of infantry, push them up like so. So the camels are, yeah, camels are charging in. Toggle Pike Square. Curious to see what, how different this is to do, to to um, creating a Pike Square. It's creating an inf a, a um, square formation. Okay, cavalry run. Okay, keep my cavalry running past the combat. Actually, if these guys are going to open up on the Sikh warriors. Obviously over here, camel gunners are up to no good against my pikes. I might send... See, they deployed even more over here. There's, there's still one more unit of pikes, and it looks like the bulk, a large number of their troops are actually coming over this way as well. So let's charge the Sikh warriors with my cavalry. Okay, then hop back over here. The Sikh warriors have, have, have routed, which is excellent. You men cease fire. They are shattered as well, so that's good news. My Pokemon are doing... They are losing, losing numbers against the camels, but the camels are going to break. Now you guys can fire at will once more. And they are shattered, which is excellent news. Back on the other flank, I didn't want my Tercio pikemen completely isolated. You guys continue to engage the troops up on the hill. Some Andari horsemen have received some uh, encouragement to go elsewhere. So these men can pull back to get in a better angle for my guns to provide some support. Engage. My cavalry sit, sta sit in standby. Go get him. Stop firing. Take a more traditional position with respect to the line. So this is this is great. So you managed to make them route by doing barely any, barely any damage to them really. But my cavalry is fast enough to pick them off as they route. 
So on this flank... We're still engaging against their infantry. Now we can provide some good canister shot support. Okay, the camels are routed. Back over here, we're seeing good things happen. Uh, Seek musketeers, they're no slouches. Recovery firing by rank is going to be good enough to clear them out. I may push these guys out into more of a triangular formation to try and spread out their fire a bit more. These levy are trying to charge, so if you gunners aren't likely to be ready in time so let's counter charge them with my infantry we might make them route okay we did make them route so get out of the way because canister shot is coming their way although they're shattered so you may as well focus on the seat musketeers So I've got a bit more of a conventional battle on the left flank. To be honest, I might just smash my cavalry into those guys to kill them and take these men and push them up to make a new front against the troops coming down the hill. You guys continue to engage the guns in the distance. So if you men are going that way, these guys can go this way. guys hit the Hindu Musketeers. We do have the General's Bodyguard back here, so I'm going to try, ch try, uh, try Cavalry charge the Seat Musketeers. Okay, you guys can switch to Round Shot and engage the General's Bodyguard to the rear. Tercio Pikemen get into the Bowman fight to stop them from being too decisively cut down. You know, armed populace is not going to last very long. Okay, now these men are going to push up to form a new front line. And you guys are going to push around like so. You continue to open up on the general's bodyguard. Okay, now my pikemen are here to provide a bit more support for my cavalry. Their glorious hats and plate armour gleaming. So you hit the dervishes, you guys. Also counter charge them in the flank. Okay, now they're done for. Let's push up this up this hill. Really, I'd like my cavalry to get out of here and get out and go take out their guns. My infantry here are going to mow down those Sikh musketeers. Yeah, that was... Didn't see that coming. Okay, you guys run, run, run. My pikemen will still do a real good number against these bowmen, especially as they're routing. Yeah, there they go. So you snipe their artillery to the rear. So the General's Bodyguard will fall. Oh, we do have some guns over here. So let's get my cavalry to circumvent this combat to go catch them out. Now let's deploy my General. These men here are going to load and fire. And because the, the elephants do count as infantry target, they do get fire by rank to death. 
I mean, they're not going to kill the general because other people are still reloading. But they could. No, he's not gonna, they're not going to get him. The cavalry chased down the guns. It's a bit risky charging in my Tercia pikemen like this, but it is, there is a large target for my other infantry to hit. So the chance for friendly fire is is reduced. The generals come back. Oh, my Tercia pikemen have been routed by my own gunfire. These dervishes have decided to re-engage so we're going to turn around and kill them you continue to chase down the guns as will you make sure they have no artillery left okay you guys Pivot, make sure my general's bodyguard doesn't run into combat. Come on, take out the gunners. Good stuff. Go focus on those Indian mercenaries. The general's been killed, which is nice. My general come after this armed populace. Let's get all of my guns to stop firing. these chaps. Reload. Pour fire into the Hindu musketeers. I presume it's a terrain issue, which is why this has lasted so long. And I think it is. They can't kill each other, but these guys absolutely can. Yeah, there they go. There you go. Let's continue. And then let's just make sure our cavalry are engaging everything they can. It would be nice if my general could get some proper kills. There we go, it's gone up an experience level. And the regiment of horse. Yeah, they're going to struggle to knock out these musketeers because they are they routed from being stuck behind a building, so they're very spread out. But just keep right clicking. They'll figure it out eventually. Uh, you guys. Yeah. Charge down. I mean, you're doing quite a good job against the musketeers. I'm not going to act like you aren't. But it's usually it's just a pathfinding thing. You can at least kill a good number of them before they get to the edge of the map. If nothing else. I mean, you guys, if you play your cards right, you can kill all of them. Okay, so this other unit managed to route. So now the pathfinding should, should be a lot better because they've got a lot more cavalry on the map chasing after these units. But I fear it will not be enough. Too much. Too little, too late. Damn. And it says it's a close victory. It certainly isn't. That was quite a nice win for our forces there. They lost to nearly 3,000 men. They lost nearly three times as many as our guys. And the Tercio Pikemen did really well, but uh, they need some serious replenishment. Mm. Yeah, better go clear out the port, because you know we're not going to uh, give up near the town. So let's hop up to Naples. Spend some money on replenishment. Let's take our sloop and let's sail it away from this region in general because I don't want to damage anything else. We're a trading port in Algiers although we might actually build a local fishery to try and boost the growth of the, these other two towns. Okay now we've got some we can drop some cash on some Industry areas. 
Or, no. Don't have roads yet, not for one more turn. Let's hop up to the Americas. Okay, so you recruit some sloops to occupy ports after we leave. Okay, let's get let's get cobble roads for Nassau. Actually, where? Well, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000. Okay, let's upgrade the happiness building. Let's go upgrade the boardy house to a theatre. Interestingly, I didn't know this. It's the boardy house that means you can recruit Swiss troops. We all know where the Swiss like to hang out when they're overseas, eh? Let's upgrade you to a theatre so we can increase or speed up our chances of building a school in London. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time for another episode of the Spanish Empire and the French are a bit concerning really <laughs> but we shall see we shall see thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy